Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about number line questions on the math portion of the SAT. Number line questions ask you to solve for the distances and other values associated with a standard number line. So make sure you draw a number line if one isn't given, and remember to make up numbers if the question is dealing with variables. So the first thing I want to make sure you understand is the difference between a filled in point versus a not filled in point on a number line. If you're dealing with symbols less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, those would imply that you fill in the point, meaning that the point is true for the question. So in the number line below, we're looking at the equation for x is less than or equal to 8 and greater than or equal to negative 2. As a result, we're going to fill in the points negative 2 and 8, signifying that they would be true for our equation. Now with inequalities that say greater than or less than without the equals, we don't want to count those outer points. So if we were to graph the equation x is greater than negative 6, we would want to circle the negative 6, not fill it in, because that point would not be true for our equation. So one of the things I want to talk about with number lines is that you can work backwards from the answers on the number line to the actual equation. So rather than have to kind of determine exactly what the right equation is, just use a number. So let's take an example. 3 is a true value on our number line. It should be also true in the equation that we're picking. So it's true in A, it's true in B, it's true in C, but it's not true in D. So now we've eliminated D. Now let's take another number, like negative 2. Negative 2 is true in our number line, but negative 2 is not true for A. It's true for B, it's true for C, and it's true for E. So now we've eliminated A and D. Now let's take a point that's not true on our number line, like 9. So if 9 is not true, but when we plug in 9 into choice E, it would be true, so then E has to go away as well. The last thing we would look at here is the number 8, which is on our end. Now 8 is a true value, but if we put in 8 into choice B, it's not true. So B would go away as well, and that yields C. So what I'm getting at here is that if you just take points that you know are true, they need to be true in the right equation. If you take points that are not true, they need to not be true in the right equation. So this hopefully can save you from having to kind of come up with the perfect equation for the number line. The last thing I want to talk about is making up numbers for variables. When number lines have variables in them, it's tempting to just kind of work with this in a theoretical nature. I'd rather that you make it very concrete and apply specific numbers to those variables in question. So in this question below, we want, the, we want to know what is the value of the absolute value of c minus d. So let's make a, num a number for c. Looking at the number line, c is clearly negative, and it's halfway between negative 1 half and negative 1. So I'm going to call c negative 0.75. d looks to be about negative 0.25. So when I do the absolute value of c minus d, I get the absolute value of negative 1 or 1. Now all I have to do is determine what value in my number line corresponds to the number 1, and the closest answer is A, for choice A. So by making up real numbers, I have a concrete way to determine what is the result of an algebraic expression, and this should make it much easier for you to do. So I hope you learned a lot about number lines, and see you soon in another one of our math videos.